But we released that beer, and we didn't know what it was going to be like. So we announced 11 o'clock tomorrow we're going to start selling this beer. I got to work at 8.30, and there was a line down the sidewalk in a snowstorm. And it was like, holy shit, this is for real, you know? A huge increase in beer production in Vermont's craft breweries has lended itself to a huge increase in demand and the possibility of higher prices for the flour they run on, hops. Hit a possum up and got a beer. Tore my bumper up, I said, Tar, you can't steer. Well, Damn at it. least I didn't hit another deer. But I told you watch a row and you didn't even hear. Damn I it. hit a possum, went and got a beer. Tore my bumper up, I said, Tar, you can't steer. Well, Damn at it. least I didn't hit another deer. But I told you watch a row and you didn't even hear. Damn it. According to the Brewers Association, Vermont ranks first for production of the most gallons of beer per adult over 21. The unique brews at the small independent breweries are pulling a lot of that weight. I was worried, but you told me that you'd bring it right back. Well, I can't help it, man. I'm always getting lost. Not to mention you're going to have to go and get a new exhaust. Sorry, get a possum. Getting some heady popper. Heady topper. How you doing? Hello, yeah. all set. All right. We're getting some more heady topper before we go. Mm -hmm. Is this your biggest seller? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just happened to have a can of Beer Advocates top rated beer in the world. Here, this one, my friends, is Hetty Topper from The Alchemist out of Vermont, 8% alcohol by volume. This is the first year that this beer was released in cans. It has a Beer Advocate score of 100. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen Beer Advocate in the last six, eight months have a 100 on anything. I mean, I think the biggest score I've seen is like a 93 or a 94, and for them to have a 100, everybody has 100. They do recommend drinking it from the can. All along the top of the can here, it tells you to drink from the can. And it says all across the this top says drink from the can, drink from the can, drink from the can. They recommend doing that so that the uh, hop resins and hop oils do get mixed up rather than when you pour them in the glass they might get stuck behind in the, con the can. Oh, I got some hop chunks and stuff uh, when I finished pouring out the can. Uh, apparently they dry hop it and don't filter it. It's, it's unfiltered so it is going to have some sediment in it. So basically what I'd like to do is get it out of there and get it into the can with one easy pour and leave all that crap uh, in the bottom of the can. And without further ado, let me get this one to a glass so that you guys know how it smells, tastes, and give you the verdict on the one, the only, Heady Topper. Let's see if it is in fact the world's greatest beer. With that being said, let's get on with it. Wow! That is a big earthy, resinous, dank smelling double IPA. Well, the hop note is just amazing coming out of this can. Um, absolutely wonderful. Wow, smells wonderful. Oh, but this thing is swimming in hops. Holy cow. Mm. Oh yeah. That is very nice. That is, that's extremely nice. It's just this big kind of astringent grapefruit pine needle, you know, like just bouquet of floral epicness just swimming in my mouth. It's just amazing stuff. Wow. Oh. That may be one of the best uh, IPAs I've ever had. These guys got it figured out. It's one of the best doubles I think I've ever had. Wow. For me, this one's an easy A+. Plus. This is one, this is the best double IPA on the East Coast, and it's definitely one of the best double IPAs in the country, if not the world. Wow. That's, that's all I can say about it is wow. Wow. That's delicious. Well, that's a 10 beer, guys. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a 10. 
It's delicious. It's got everything. It's, it's released consistently on a weekly basis, basically. So if you want to get it, you are going to be able to get it to you fresh. Just absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, if you can get your hands on it, I, I highly recommend you do. If you hadn't had it, you can get it, and you're a hophead, you need to pick this one up, guys. <laughs> there you go. All right. Are you making a documentary on Hedy Topper? Yes, you know, we're from out of town, so. You might as well, right? Exactly. <laughs> I got the Hedy Topper from Vermont. These can't, oh, I gotta move these cans. So this is apparently a famous, um, renowned, is that the right word, beer from Vermont. It comes in this can, so I don't think they come in bottles. I mean, we get asked all the time a lot of the same questions. And so really, that's what this is all about, is just to answer some of these questions for people. Uh, you know, the first one, of course, is why from a can? Why do you put it in a can? And, because in our opinion, that is just the best way to present Hetty Topper. Protects it, oxygen, light, very recyclable, um, all of which are reasons that we use the can. People say, why do you tell me to drink it from the can? And there's a couple of reasons for that. First and foremost, it's because I want beer, especially Hetty Topper, to just be considered a, it's a beer it's it's nothing elevated it's nothing more than what it is and what it is is the perfect drink for the working person the common man and so what better way than to put a world-class beer into such a common container and yet make it still fantastic so that's a big part of it the recyclability huge reason uh, we don't want broken glass out in the rivers all my favorite swimming holes. I know people are going to take the beers out there and I just couldn't handle if there was broken glass. The other reason we tell people to drink it from the can is because, like it describes on the back, if you pour it in a glass, you are inundating it with oxygen. Just slamming it in there, it gets all oxidized and smells wonderful for a short time and that's fine. But when you get down to the bottom of your glass, if it sits there for 20 minutes, it is a completely different beer. Whereas if you're drinking it straight from the can, every time you take a sip, there's a little layer of CO2 that hangs on top of that beer and protects it. And sometimes, I mean, I've had a can set for an hour with that much in it, and I come back and that last sip is almost as good as the first one. So to me, that's the big selling point. It's like if I came back to uh, that much in my glass after an hour, might not be so great, you know, and that's just the nature of the beast. You know, we have people say, well, why are you drinking it out of a glass on the lo logo and uh, you tell us to drink it out of the can? It's like, well, because we designed that logo in 2003 when all we had was a pub and we love that logo and we're not going to change it. So this particular store, they're so popular, especially on uh, the fake July 4th of Vermont, which is tomorrow. Uh, maybe, maybe all the bottles are gone. So they're actually, uh, what do you call it, um, limiting these beers to one of these four packs per person at this store we got it. And it comes in a four pack. I'm assuming they don't come in six packs. But you're allowed to only get one per store or one they're, per- One case. When, yeah. do they, when do they start limiting? Or when did your, your business start limiting it? Uh, we've always had it Always? Limited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used to have it limited to two, mm -hmm. but we couldn't keep it on the shelf for more than a day. Okay. And mostly, because so many people call and ask, and it's like a lot of people from out of state, all these tourists would show up at once and buy like all of it in like a day and a half. And then the locals, When it was unlimited. Which, yeah, well, we had it limited to the two, two per okay. person, yeah. And even then, people were not liking that. Right. We never, ever thought that we would be making this much of one beer. And it's crazy. I mean, we brew Monday through Thursday, we can Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We can three 60 barrel batches, which is 24 pallets of beer, and it is gone by Friday afternoon. We have nothing to sell Friday night or Saturday while we're open. We're just giving away samples all day on Saturday, and then we're closed on Sunday, and it all starts again. Um, we've gotten flack for that from people, <laughs> which is kind of crazy, you know? People are like, you need to make more, and it's like, don't tell me what I need to do. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, 
we do what we can and we will never sacrifice the quality of that beer. We, I have a very clear vision of what I want that beer to be and that beer is what I want it to be and we will not change that beer. It has this whole thing on the back. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it, a little sample. Hedy Topper is an American double India Pale Ale. This beer is not intended to be the biggest or our most bitter. It is meant to give you wave after wave of hoppy goodness on your palate. Uh, another common question people ask is how long can I hold on to my heady topper? How long is it good? When does it go bad? It doesn't go bad. We go to great lengths to get it in perfect condition in the can and it will be a completely different beer uh, as it ages because being unfiltered and unpasteurized it continues to change in the can um, which is not a bad thing. It's just different. If you like your IPAs super young and green and raw, you drink it right away. If you like it to be a bit more refined and graceful, you let it sit and age. Um, sometimes I don't really love it until it's been in the can at least three or four days. Other times, I can remember back in the days of the pub, I had written on a recipe sheet 10 weeks because I tried it every day for 10 weeks and I felt that Hetty Topper was at its best at 10 weeks old. Um, we release it and it's 28 days old, so it's only four weeks old. So you be the judge. You can drink it anywhere in there. If you keep it in your fridge, it could last a long time. This can, I just pulled out of the cooler. This is from last July and it is now April. So long time ago. This will be sparkling bright, I would assume. It's got its great carbonation. It's gonna have a lot of sediment on the bottom. But you just watch that stream of beer right there and as long as it's still clear, you're not getting anything off the bottom. And there it is, eight months old. It smells beautiful and hoppy. It has a wonderful mouthfeel. Nice, bright, fresh hop character. And there it is, eight, nine months old in a can in our cooler. As long as you store it properly, you could age a can for a year if you wanted to. Now, just so you see, I'm going to swirl this and show you over that much time, you're going to see a tremendous amount of sediment in here. So all of that fresh young haze that starts in there, that eventually turns to that, you can see just how bright and sparkling clear that is. And that's what drops out. Protein, hop resin, and uh, good stuff. Tastes almost identical to this. So all that sediment, you can't feel it on your palate, you can't taste it, but so be it. That's why you drink that last shot out of the can. I'm gonna sample it now. Let me uh, get a quick swig. I don't know how to take these out. Hold up. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to fake a bouquet. It actually smells good. All right. Yeah, that's good beer. That's a good beer, and it's not overly bitter either, but it has a nice punch. In the family of Samuel, Samuel Adams and all that kind of stuff, everybody knows a hoppy India Pale Ale has that distinctive flavor. But this is uh, this is good. It made Fox News. Mm. That's a good beer. Thank you very much. Happy Vermont. <laughs> There's a lot of beer around here. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. They love the Hedy Topper. I love the Hedy Topper. It's too, it's too rich for, for her. I've never tried it, but people like, oh, this is a big market for that. Oh, you love it? Yeah. She's yeah. Not, there's another, he says Oh, you like it? Here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I'm from Montreal, so every time I'm down here, people like bring some back. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. The tourists figured out way before the local people did one. Okay. Because they bothered to call and ask. The local people just show up at random and be like, whoa. Nope, not here and leave. They don't ask me questions. So stalking out the place is a touristy thing. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> At this point, I don't know if we're ever going to make more Hetty Topper. People ask us all the time, are you going to expand? When's the next expansion? And you know, we've kind of thought maybe we would 
bump that to 12,000 barrels, but if we did, the only reason would be so that we don't run out. <laughs> so that our retail room, we actually have beer when a customer comes through the door, they're not walking away disappointed. That's the reason we always have samples for people, because we don't want somebody coming in that they're just so looking forward to it and they get there on a Saturday and it's like tough we don't have beer, you know? And then they would walk away and just be pissed at the alchemist. There are like delivery days. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I, right. um, yeah. yeah, I have a summer course I'm taking up in Winooski and Thursday, mm -hmm. is yeah. the, like everybody's lined up at the bevy because yeah. that's delivery day. Yeah. So all the tourists would come and get it and then the local people, which somehow have not figured out that we sell it on Thursday, would show up and be like, ooh. It's all sold out. That's interesting. Angry. The <laughs> tourists know about the limit yeah, of the day. Yeah, no, I'm serious. Heady Topper from the day I started making it. I first made it about three months into the life of the pub. Um, and there was something about it from day one that people just went nuts for. Has it been a mad rush out here? Has, have people got angry? No, really what people try most is um, when we say, can only have one per person they'll say oh well can, can i come out and come back in mm -hmm. and we've had people that go out to their car and like put on a hat and come back in <laughs> you're clearly still the, you're same, the person. same person yeah right. and they're like oh no it's like the clark kent superman thing <laughs> yeah. yes i i think you're the same person but i'll yeah. pretend not yeah do you ever get tired of brewing the same beer every day do you ever get tired of having sex <laughs> you know <laughs> There you go. So this this beautiful girl. Don't have to laugh. Just, uh, all right. So as you were saying, heady top where you're kind of over it. Personally. So what do you generally recommend for drinking? Um. Well, I like sour beers, so I usually go with the Duchess or Rodenbach Grand Cru. Okay. Those are personal. My personal opinion. To get tired of making a great beer? No way. It's like asking Rodenbach if they get tired of making Rodenbach. It has a. Um, it has a real deep uh, uh, aroma. Sweet, but it's like almost like a sherry. It has a, a sherry aroma. It's almost like kombucha. It has that oh, almost a vinegary taste. Mm. Okay, yeah. So that uh, it's good. It's it's like a kombucha. Uh, how do you say it? Kombucha. Kombucha has it's almost me think that that's a, salad. a vinegary taste. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's like, so this, so now, are these the same? Okay. So now, this is probably Lawler, Lawler's because it, Lawson's. It has that that really aromatic double IPA smell, sweet and and you know, <laughs> but uh, enough of the Scorsese. So uh, th I believe this is Lawson because it, it reminds me of Hetty Topper. Let me taste it. It doesn't taste like Hetty Topper at all. It's much more smooth. Is it hoppy? It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it has all those citrusy and grapefruity overtones, but it's not Hetty Topper-ish at, at all. Not as, ar not as ar aromatic. Smooth. It has almost a little bit of a, uh, uh, IPA reach, but then it, it goes down kind of malty. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, good. it's pretty good. Okay, I give all three thumbs up. <laughs> this was the sour. Yeah. This was the Lawson. Mm -hmm. And this was the Edward. Yep. Okay, I, I get what you're saying. It's almost like a kombucha. Mm. That's, that's a good uh, I get it. I, that's what I get from it. And I like that. I really like it a lot. Uh, mm. Is it sweeter? Is it? I think it's definitely gender neutral. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's sour, so it's tart. Some people don't like it though. It's definitely an acquired taste. For, for someone who is not from Vermont, not over the beers yet, mm -hmm. has already sampled the Heady Topper. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend the Sour Bill beer or the the uh, Lawson's? I'd recommend the Lawson Sip of Sunshine or Hill Farmstead Everett, um, which is a porter. And then the farmstead Edward also. Okay. I think I'm gonna go with an Edward. Edward. Great. Yeah. yeah, that's like their staple beer. Like you know, it's like 
it, it's just this unique creation that I could never get tired of it because it's so much, it means so much to so many people. There are, there are some hop resins and sediment in there. And I don't guess they want you to see that. If you're drinking it from the can, you can't see that. But it does have some stuff floating around in it. So nothing that's going to hurt you, I'm sure. You know, as for pouring it, we get a lot of people that review our beer online, which is fantastic. We love that. We love getting the feedback. This has got heavy, heavy hot sediment in here. Hot, hot particles floating around there. That's why they want you to leave it in the can. They don't want you to see all them hot particles floating around in your glass. It's not going to hurt you. It's a wonderful beer though. Um, when we tell people how to pour a beer, you got to pour it lively. You want to throw that head from the start. You get a beautiful pour. This can actually just came off the canning line behind me, so it is wicked hazy. Hasn't had a chance for any kind of sediment to drop out of there, so you won't get any particulate in there. But when a can sits and ages, just like it used to in my serving tanks at the pub, Pop resins, proteins will drop out of the solution. The beer will become more bright as it ages and you will get sediment on the bottom of the can. A lot of, a lot of stuff in the glass, so, I mean, definitely unfiltered. Not gonna hurt you though, it's good stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. One of the common mistakes I see of people when they do that is they'll pick up a can and they'll turn it all around like it's a filtered Budweiser, but it's not. It's unfiltered, unpasteurized beer. And it is absolutely uh, an unfiltered beer. You can tell it's bottled or canned condition. It is very cloudy. So if you're going to pour it out and you don't want any sediment in your glass, let your can sit in the fridge 24 hours. Pull it out carefully. Don't be tipping it around, reading it and pour it like a bottle conditioned beer. When you get down to that much left in the can, you can drink that out of the can and then you've got a perfectly poured example in front of you. Yes, let's leave the garbage in the can. I hit a possum, went and got a beer. Tore my bumper up, I said, Tar, you can't steer. Damn, well, at least I didn't hit another deer. But I told you watch a row and you didn't even hear. Damn, it went to sleep. The $14 billion craft brew industry has run into a slight problem. The beer makers are running out of hops. Craft beers, including India Pale Ales, use more hops than the average lager. Demand is up, so are prices, and supplies are down. Local craft breweries tonight are feeling the pinch. Local brewers say they lean on each other and other people who can help when, from time to time, they do get into a pinch. They'll make calls to one another to trade. We're out of a little bit of something, they're out of a little bit of something, we'll just switch around and figure it out. Or they'll visit the Craft Brewers online forum to make a deal with someone out of state for the limited resource. You know, at the end of the year when the harvest comes in, that's what you have for the year. Admittedly, brewers say these ways that the local breweries operate to stay afloat might not be the case elsewhere, but it is the Vermont way. We're just doing what we can now to help everybody else. People say, why don't you make more? You could be in every state in the country, and it's just like, well, yeah, we probably could, but to what end, you know? It's like, when is enough enough? If you're making enough money that you don't have to worry about your next paycheck and you have a thriving business, at that point, we don't want to get bigger. If we get bigger, it's just going to be not the same, you know? As we get bigger and we're more successful, our only goal is to spread that success to our employees. We have 25 employees now and I think my job is complete when they all say they love their job. You know, when, you know, I mean, we go way above and beyond for our employees. I mean, we have worked for so many bosses and had so many crappy jobs over the years. And I will never forget that. Just like I always tell myself, I will never forget how it was to be a teenager. You know, it's like when my kid is a teenager, I will sympathize because I will not forget. It sucked, you know? 
And the same thing. I know what it's like to get up and go to a job. And man, here we go. All of a sudden you're standing there, it's like, oh, I have seven hours and 58 more minutes of this, you know? <laughs> and so I, I can't have jobs like that. I would not be able to sleep at night if I knew my employees were being used like that. And so we want to keep it the size that it is. It's bigger than we ever thought it would be. We want to just make everybody work less. You know, it's like if we get a new canning line in a couple of years, I mean, right now we can 27 cans a minute or something like that. When we can 60 barrels of beer, it's a long day. It's a 10 hour day. We do that three days a week. If we get a new canning line and make that big investment, it's not because I'm going to can three times as much beer. It's because I want to make that 10 hour day three hours. Go, beer's canned, go home. You get your salary. I'm not going to cut your salary according to your hours. You're getting your salary. I would rather see you have more time with your family because you're going to be a happier, better employee. When the shit goes down, you're going to be like, I'm there. I'm coming in. Man, he treats me so well. I'll do anything. You know, there's a lot to be said for that. There's not a lot of jobs like that. And uh, that's it. We appreciate everybody that drinks Heady Topper. Keep it up. We love doing what we're doing, and uh, we hope you do too. I'm sorry, what's your name? Kelly. 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 Okay. Kelly. Okay. It's beautiful. We're very friendly. We're not from here. It's an Irish place. No you don't say. <laughs> Thank you. Did I get your names? Joel Martin. Joel Martin. You got the look. Yeah, all right. You're going to get all the babes. Yep. And, and you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice to meet you. We're gonna take some back. Where is it you're from? The DC area. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, well very good. I tell everybody all the Vermonters have been very friendly. Oh well, yeah. good. So thank you. I'm glad. Okay, well, thank you. Can I get your name? It's Erica. Thank you, Erica. Nice to meet you. You're welcome. So, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Yeah. Ciao. It's just like he says there. Drink it up now, they make it more all the time. Fancy beer. Your only can of the world's greatest beer currently to share it, to, to not share it would be uh, rude at best. That's a really beautiful start. Fancy beer. Two, three, four. When I'm lonely, I drink a fancy beer. Fancy beer. Oh, when I want you only, I drink a fancy beer. Fancy beer. And when the weather's stormy and daybreak is far, I throw an extra dollar fifty on the bar. There's no sense in saving pennies if I don't know where you are. Oh, I drink a fancy beer. Fancy beer. Candy honey, but I can't get it. I drink a fancy beer. Fancy beer. When there's no one there to hold me for the whole of the night, I put in an order for a seven dollar pint. Though I ain't made of money, I look classy getting tight. Oh, drinking a fancy beer. Fancy beer. Say, friend, what are you gonna drink tonight? Fancy beer. Oh, friend, what are you gonna drink tonight? Fancy Two, fancy three, beer. four. a fancy beer fancy beer oh when, when i want you only i drink a fancy beer fancy beer
And when the weather's stormy, when the weather's stormy, and daybreak's fall, and the daybreak is fall, I throw an extra dollar fifty on the bar. There's no sense in saving pennies if I don't know where you are. I drink a fancy beer, fancy beer. Oh, I drink a 